Hello and welcome to this uh, Professional Development Week session, Unlocking NCFE Mastering Website Navigation for Providers. The objective of this session is to explore effective search methods of the NCFE website to support classroom delivery of our qualifications and prepare learners for assessments by accessing the support and resources that are available. My main focus is going to be on the awarding section. So for those of you who are already delivering our qualifications and exploring where you can find resources. So we'll, looking, we'll look at um, qualification searches. We will look at um, onboarding support, delivery support, quality assurance, assessment support, customer and learner support, mandatory policies and fees. And then at that point, I'm going to take a look at the chat, uh, have a look at anything that's come through and we can go to anywhere else um, that you've that you've requested. If there's time, then we may briefly look at um, the other things here, sector specialisms, learning for work, technical education, apprenticeship, skills assessment, accreditation services. However, if there's not time, then I have included these on this presentation because um, you may be, uh, they may be of interest to you and I will be sending you the slides. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to disappear from my presentation and go to the NCFE website. So first thing, most important thing is to be able to search for our qualifications. So from the NCFE website, if I go to qualifications, then I can go to search our qualifications. Now, when I'm here, I can pop in anything I like. Um, so so I've already clearly got some um, things that I search for a lot. Um, so you can search by a, a subject. Um, so for example, you know, business um, and just hit return and do a, do a search. But then when you're here, I can then change my keyword up at the top. I can also, um, so if I just, I'm just gonna get rid of business and enterprise and I'll just put in business because there's quite a lot of business qualifications. But if I wanna filter um, by the type of qualifications, I can look for those that have performance points. So these are useful if you're a school. Um, performance points and UCAS points. Um, they're also important if you're a school or college. Uh, if it's a T level, so I can, I can you know, filter for those. So for example, if I filtered for performance points, I'm pretty sure it would just be the VSA, the level one, two tech award. Um, oh, but we've also got the uh, the T level coming up as well, because uh, that also has performance points. So I've got those, I can remove that. If I wanted to look for a nested qualification, so that's those types of qualifications that build up, then I can do so. I can search by level. Um, I can search by funding. Uh, and that's quite important for um, less so maybe for teachers, but for those of you, um, I, I'm not quite sure what your uh, roles are, but if you're in the sort of the management side of things and obviously funding is important, um, then there's sectors or the type of qualification, whether it's just a unit or full qualification. Uh, so you can go through those. Uh, it also tells you whether or not there's teaching materials available. So for this one, then I have got teaching materials available, but I did, I searched for one specifically because I, I wanted to show you one without any teaching because we, we don't have teaching materials for everything because we're the awarding organization and you know you guys are, the, are the, the, the training providers. And where we do create any teaching resources, they are for you to use as you see fit, but none of our teaching resources are mandatory. Um, I'm gonna to go to this qualification here and I'll show you what is mandatory. Um, so all of our qualification pages are laid out in exactly the same way. So you've got the, the reference, which is useful if you need to check for funding. You've got the registration and certification free uh, fee, guided learning hours, 
all of our qualifications will have this um, tab, support materials. So you do have to click into that. Um, and then from there, everything that's mandatory is here. So that's basically just the qualification specification. And so for this one um, in particular, and I bear, you know, I'm, I'm just picking this one at random, but um, as a little bit of an indication of the way they're laid out, um, you've got aims and objectives, entry guidance, etc. how to achieve the qualification. Um, and then for this qualification, because there's no teaching materials, I don't have a teaching materials tab. Whereas if I go back and do a search for um, another one that, I mean, I could go to various of our, of our qualifications. I'm going to go and do a search for this because I've chosen this one specifically because some of our teaching resources are, are ones that we've created. Where are we? Yeah. And then I think it's this one. And then others of the teaching resources. So again, we've got support materials. So I've got my mandatory qualification information. So there'll be the specification, um, anything additional. You know, there's a mapping document there for this one, support handbook. Uh, in the teaching materials one, these teaching materials are externally produced. And so you would just um, click on those and it would take you to the link for Learning Curve who create those resources. That The reason they're on here is because we've endorsed them. Um, but you would need to speak to Learning Curve you know, in this example uh, to, to access those. Uh, other qualifications that we have, well, we've got lots of um, uh, free resources and I'm going to use one of my, my, my specialism is um, functional skills, specifically maths. So I'm going to take you to a maths page and rather than doing a, a search for maths, I know that in my delivery support section, I've got quick links to some of our most, um, the, the tends to be the qualifications that have external assessments are in here. So functional skills, I can scroll down. I can go to um, my favorite uh, level two in maths. Um, and again, laid out in exactly the same way. Uh, but here I've got more tabs um, than that first one I took you to. So the support materials, again, really important. Always, no matter which qualification you're going to, refer to the qualification specification. Um, that's got everything, how the qualifications are assessed, whether it's internal, or external. Um, then if it is an external assessment, um, then it's likely that we're going to have assessment materials. So we've got for maths here and it's the same for English or um, uh, the majority of our or all of our um, qualifications that have external assessments, you'll find assessment materials and whether that is um, past papers as here because it's been going live for so long or practice papers or sample papers because it's a new qualification you will find resources in that assessment materials tab that you can use and then we've got teaching materials so for this qualification there are some that are free there are some that have a charge um, and again Nothing that you will find in the teacher materials tab of our qualifications is mandatory. It's there to support you um, with your with your delivery. And sometimes we do get asked, how do we access these? How do I because uh, I do have to add it to my cart and then I see it in my basket. I get my little order summary uh, in order to access this. I do need to log into the portal. And uh, that will bring me on to where I'm probably planning to go to next, which is um, onboarding support. So uh, I'm going to go to my onboarding here and here's the portal. OK, this isn't the actual portal. This is information on the portal. If I want to log into the portal, there's my login. If you need a login to the portal, then whoever is the portal administrator for your center, and that's usually somebody like the exams officer, they can create additional users, as many users as you need. And if they need support with that, we've got the portal user guide. 
So this is updated um, June 2024, which is um, actually means that I need to change my slides uh, because that was um, an April version. So always try to as much as possible. And that goes for qualification specifications. It goes for um, teaching resources. Try to obviously you can make paper copies, but paper copies are not subject to version control. Whereas anything that is online is subject to version control. So you know that if you're accessing it direct from the website, then you will get the latest version of whatever the resource um, it is that you want to, to see. So uh, the portal user guides, you know, I can create users uh, for my center. It gives you all the information um, that that needs to be done to uh, register for assessments, uh, well, to register for qualifications, to book uh, assessments. So everything's in there. Um, there is also from when you're actually in the portal, you can download the portal user guide as well. So that's quite handy. Uh, there's also some other useful documents on this onboarding page because it tells you how to become how to become an approved centre if you happen to be joining and you you're not currently with us. Um, but it also shows you how to just add an additional product into your basket. Um, you know, if you wanted to do a new qualification, and if you wanted to do a new qualification, then it's it you usually get approved within a working day. It's very easy. So. Next thing we're going to look at is delivery support, uh, my favorite, because um, delivery support uh, on my team. So I, I'm on the provider development team alongside Patricia, who's um, supporting me in the background. But what we do is we support our providers with uh, their planning, delivery and preparation for assessment and all of the support that we provide. Uh, you'll find in the delivery support page. So. Um, functional skills uh, that Patricia and I both um, support with. We've got various events that we put on, so training and events. Um, similarly, for digital functional skills, there's training and events for T-levels, for V-certs. Um, you know, you can request a support call. There's other training as well um, because our quality assurance team also deliver training. Um, and from this page, so I've just gone delivery support training. From this training page, you'll find everything you'll find this week. Uh, assessor training, IQA training, functional skills training, T-levels training, research training. So everything is there. And if you scroll down, then you can see everything that's coming up. And interestingly, when we last did the professional development week um, in uh, around Christmas time, a lot of attendees were saying, oh, if only there was stuff like this all year round. And, and we were saying, there is. Um, so we we wondered, maybe we just didn't highlight it enough. So I can, although I've got all of the training here, um, I can um, scroll and, uh, you know, I can uh, search by qualifications. So digital functional skills, we can see what's coming up. Um, uh, if there's anything for T-levels, um, I'll see what's coming up. So digital T levels, there's lots on demand there. So I know I know May is it has been and gone, um, but I think a lot of these, some of these are on demand, and it's just when they first went live was was in May. So uh, there's our delivery support page. Uh, let me just double check if there was anything else from the delivery support page that I wanted to show you specifically. Uh, oh yeah, I did. So from the actual delivery support page, so if I if I click here, then I go to the page that has um, delivery support and quite a lot of our providers, they tell us, oh, how do we sign up for the service newsletter? Um, can you sign us up for the service newsletter? Um, yes, we can. Um, we can you know, edit your contacts within our our um, our internal um, system uh, to add you. But you can also request service newsletters yourself. Um, so we've got uh, service messages um, from here. There's a service messages archive. Um, 
you can get further information. There's uh, lots of English and maths at CPD events. Um, so there's information there where you can access our customer and learner support. Uh, let me just go back to here. Uh, and then again, you've got quick links to all of the uh, useful um, additional sort of training. So training for functional skills, for T levels, etc. But then down here, because quite often in the qualification specifications, it links to the support handbook and the support handbook is here because it's in delivery support, things like learner evidence tracking log, um, evidence and grading calculator. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, when documents get updated, do we get informed there is a new version or is it up to us to check regularly? Good question. So in the service newsletter, when there are any updates, usually those go out um, in the service newsletter. Um, it's it's unusual that for it, it's very highly unusual that an actual qualification specification is going to get updated after you have um, begun teaching. Um, so always you know refer to the qualification specification. Although I do know that um, uh, it it has it has happened. Um, so why um there's a, a whole host of different reasons um why because I, I can see the next question is why why do some documents get updated after you've started teaching them various different reasons um it could be something from off call that we have um where if it's a t-level qualification it could be something from ifate um so they are not just changed if it you know if it's something like really important like the qualification specification the um assessment materials you know they're they're not just going to be arbitrarily um updated things like the portal user guide if there's some new functionality or whatever then we will we will update that um so for the most part if there's anything big that is that is changed, then it will be communicated through the service newsletter. If you yourself are not signed up to the service newsletter, you can get signed up. Um, you can either ask us um, or you can do so via the website. Um, but there may be somebody at your centre who does get that service newsletter and it just may not be shared around with everybody. So perhaps you could find out who that person is and ask them to to share it with you. So I'm going to take a look at um, so we've looked at delivery support. Very important quality assurance. OK, and there's a lot here for uh, in preparing for quality assurance. So. Anything that's externally assessed, completely externally assessed, you're not going to need quality assurance like um, level one and two maths, um, but the majority of our qualifications are have some form of internal assessment and therefore you will need uh, quality assurance. So from this page, how to prepare for quality assurance reviews, it gives you an overview of the different type of um, uh, review, uh, the different roles that people may have. There's quick links down here. There's also a link to the assessment regulations and guides. I will show you um, uh, another way to find those. Um, you've also got uh, course file documents. Course file documents is, is really, really helpful because from here, this tells you what your EQA would expect you to have um, in terms of documentation. And for the majority of um, the types of documents, we provide templates for you, not for all of them, but for the majority. Um, so you can download those in different sections uh, and use those because we often get asked where can we find um, you know, different, different documents for um, quality assurance, but they can be downloaded from the course file documents. Okay. Oh, and it is uh, also important that you will not get allocated an EQA, external quality assurer, until you've made any registrations. So uh, our EQAs do get tend to get booked up about three months in advance. 
So if you have a set date and time that you want to certificate your learners and it's an internal assessment, just bear that in mind. You know, if, particularly if it's completely internally assessed, we're not going to have any registration or, or booking cut off dates. Um, but the only thing that, that is going to constrain you in terms of time is the availability of your EQA. So we would ask that you you know, plan so that you've you've got your EQA allocated at least three months before you plan to certificate so that you've got a chance to get that review in. Um, so there's our quality assurance uh, stuff. Really important assessment support. We get asked so many questions about um, various different uh, you know, online assessments, for example. Um, so for VCERTs now, I think parts of the T levels, uh, functional skills, uh, essential digital skills and digital functional skills, um, they also, uh, they all use the online system, our SERPAS system. And when it comes to the online assessments, then there's a registration form here. There's all the user guides here. Uh, there's lots of information. Um, also in assessment support, um, this is interesting, this this looks new actually, I've not seen this use of AI in assessments, um, that, that might be interesting for you to look at. Um, but we've got special considerations here, if you need information about special considerations, we've got the policy here, um, the time scales. Yeah, I actually got there, I got there in like five minutes max. Uh, so yes, so we've got time scales there um, and also an assessment support, really important as well, access arrangements. Obviously, if your learners are eligible for any uh, reasonable adjustments, please apply them. Um, you've got the guidance on applying uh, reasonable adjustments there. Uh, and it's worth taking a look at that even if you think that you know you, you you don't think any of your learners will be eligible because there's things that are center designated so for example um, applying 25 percent extra time if your learners um, have been in the country fewer than three years and english is not their first language um, we also have so an assessment supports very very important we've got the regulations and Obviously, everybody involved in any uh, assessments, um, whether that's a controlled internal assessment or it's an external assessment, everybody needs to be fully familiar with these regulations. We do have an invigilation training presentation, so you can download that to train any invigilators that you need. Um, you've got your external assessment timetables and support there. And yeah, there's there's other bits and bobs in the assessment supports that you can explore. Um, I've just gone to the the kind of the most most commonly used ones, I suppose. Uh, and again, within this qualifications drop down, sometimes you have to hover over it to get that drop down. There we go. Uh, within that drop down, we've got other things like customer learner support, mandatory policies and fees. Anything that's coming soon, any new qualifications and frequently asked questions. So these are our main, you know, if you if you are delivering qualifications, these are our main, um, your main port of call ultimately. There are some kind of quick links through, for example, if you were doing V-certs, rather than searching for each qualification, um, you can go to technical education go to schools uh, and there you'll find all of our V-certs um, in one place, which is jolly nice. Um, you will also find all of the T-levels uh, in one place. Uh, and as well in here, you'll find, uh, we had a, a, love, a really good session on Wednesday, actually, the post-16 reform, so you'll find further information there. So I've done a, a little, you know, this is my whiz around. This session, it was from 12.30 till one. I appreciate that 
our website is massive let's face it we've got so many qualifications um so much information um that i'm not surprised sometimes that it, it can be tricky to find what you need is there anything that you would like me to find for you oh and here's the here's another really useful thing if if you're thinking about something uh, you know, you've, you know, if it's not a qualification, but you've heard, for example, um, I know that assessment innovation in Pantheon have got a learner competition. Competition. Um, so let's see if I can find that using the search. Might be, might be taking a long time to come up. Oh, yeah, assessment innovator, learner competition. There we go. And it even got it, even though I didn't type it in properly. Um, so there's you know stuff there. So you can use that search bar at the top. <coughs> um, somebody's popped into the chat. NCFE Arts and Crafts Level 1 assessment criteria and how we mark and assess the course. Brilliant. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste your from the chat, what you wrote. Let's see what comes up and you can tell me which one it is. Is it this one? You can either give me a thumbs up or uh, heritage and traditional crafts. Is it this one? Is this the one that you mean? Yes, okay, brilliant, <laughs> thank you. Um, so if I want to find out what the assessment criteria is, and this goes for all of our qualifications, so I'm glad that you've asked, because this applies to everybody, you go to the qualification specification. So thank you very much, everybody who has joined this session. Um, I'll let you go off uh, to your days. I hope you've uh, enjoyed Professional Development Week and this session. Um, please complete the feedback form. Uh, let me quickly go to my slides before anybody disappears because um, even in even this session um, I it's it's unusual in terms of CPD because it's it's um, showing you how to use our website but that allows you to find the various resources that we have which is obviously going to help with your um, uh, delivery so there is a digital badge that's available for this session uh, because uh, we have a, um, a digital credentials provider called Learning Vault who create our um, uh, digital credentials. We can only give you a digital credential if you A, attend, and B, if you give us your written consent that we can share your name and your email address with Learning Vault so that we can issue you that certificate. And it's we share your name and email and it is for that sole purpose. Um, I'll pop that into the chat now. I have just added it into the chat. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> OK, perfect. Um, so, yeah, please do complete this. Uh, you can use your phone and do uh, use a QR code. But thank you very much for coming and I will let you get on with your days. Thank you.